Shades or no shades? Shades. Shades it is. Hides the fear in your eyes. There is always some fear in my life. It's a key to working hard. Just like I said in my philosophy video. What's up dudes? We're in the bunker and TD is here for this gun review. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Doodle. By the way, with an anecdote about the P-Series Ruger pistols. Go TD. Well, I came because you mentioned you had a P-95 and I, I, I had to ask what evidence locker he stole it out of. Because when I, I've met a couple of my cop buddies over time and I'm always kind of curious what you find out there on duty. I'm like, what do people normally, you would think common pistols would be like Glocks or stuff that's good, maybe high points. People always, yeah, high points a lot. But when a I lot ask, of high points are always lot of, in the evidence lot of them, lockers. Yeah. Lot of, and then a couple of the no-name brands. But the one that always surprised me was someone said, yeah, Ruger P-Series. And now I've heard it probably three different people have said when I've asked, like, so what's it, the one? He's like, yeah. I, I swear, every time I have to confiscate something, it's always like a P95, a P85. It's always one of those. So I was just figured, like... I wonder if they have the serial numbers ground off them. I Because yeah, usually if, so. if the bad guy's going to commit a crime, from what I know, not that I'm the expert, but from what I know, they use it as a burner pistol. So commit a crime, robbery, whatever they're doing with it, and then they ditch it. They don't ever want it to be associated with them. Either they're throwing it in the water, or apparently these guys you're talking about got pinched with them. I think they're dumb, though. They're not. Really? They're Criminals? Not, dumb? Yeah. That is so unusual. I don't think they have the foresight of, like, going through and milling it. That way it's less... I, I don't even think half the time they have the right caliber. They don't have a mag. Tell, tell me what you said about the, the mount that we're <laughs> yeah. working. So they'd actually do tests on the these uh, confiscation pistols and yeah. how many were actually working. I think, was it 60% were functional? Something like 40 that. Forty percent were non-functional. You're ballparking that, right? Yeah, this is and just, this is just anecdotal. Head. It was just an anecdotal thing from a cop, and he, he was surprised at the amount of firearms they had confiscated from criminals, where they they were nowhere close to working. And of the ones that worked, when they function tested them, they they couldn't get them without man or uh, malfunctions in the first three rounds. And here's the deal: the Ruger P series pistols they found in these confiscations, despite the best efforts of the bad guys, <laughs> despite their lack of maintenance, they still worked. Yeah, these are workhorse pistols. They stand the test of time. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Bunker review with TD, of course, on the Ruger P95. Ta-da! Better late than never. It's kind of a weird review to do now that it's out of production. But here's the deal. It's popping up, cropping up a lot in gun stores as a used pistol, which is a good alternative to perhaps a lower-priced 9mm pistol, of which we will give you a couple choices, of course. We are spoiled with options, at least. So if you roll in to your gun store and you see a Ruger P95, maybe another P-Series pistol, would you buy it? Nothing fancy. That's what the theme of this review is, the bunker review. I will answer that, I promise you. I will answer it. It might be what you suspect, maybe not. You don't have to maybe smuggle not. marijuana in order to own it anymore either. True point. First things first, before we get to all the details of the Ruger P95 here in the bunker. The Ruger P95, William Ruger's seminal 9mm masterwork, created in 1996, run all the way to 2013. <laughs> Don't you just love TD? I'm trying to be nice to it. I know, I know. We will have some negative things to say about the gun. Of course, but we're also going to have some good things to say about it. I think you will get a fair treatment here in the bunker. But 2013, man. It blew my mind. What? That this gun was produced in one form or another from 96 to 2013, the Ruger P95. They made it alongside the SR9, a gun which I do like. I like the SR9. The SR9's cool. I like the SR9. Much slimmer than this one. I don't have one here in the bunker. I uh, meant to grab ours. Yeah. Yes, we still have an SR9. We still have it. Now, this is not a huge bunker history lesson because we just don't care. Yeah, I mean, does anyone... Does but anyone... a quick year's rundown of Ruger P-Series pistols, the P-85, the anodized frame P-85, which, by the way, looked horrible. <laughs> they oh, all my look, gosh, they were horrible. so ugly. Uh, 87 to 92, it's no surprise I never owned one. P and remember, I was in Glock and Sig back then, too. In uh, fact, there's a t is that 228 gone? Is yeah. it still back there? Yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. It's in the background. New stuff in the oh. background of the bunker, dudes. No, it's in there. Okay, so that there's our old 94 
228. So this is this is a good looking, sexy pistol. I absolutely love Beautiful. the 228. Oh my goodness. West German. Too. This is a West German 228, y'all, right here. Beautiful. Eat your heart out, seen many times. Made in On West tabletop. Germany. First time in the bunker, I think. Maybe it might have been in the background. Yeah, I forget. Cool but my point is so. When I, granted this was, I said 94, I think this is 92, I got this one. So it goes back a ways, but I was into SIGs. I wasn't into P-series pistols because at the time. Because they were better. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Uh, I'll say true at this point. However, for the money, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Still a solid, solid effort. Remember, all those bad guys pistols were still working. <laughs> Don't forget that, Tactical Doodle. Yeah. Okay, we're still going down our history lesson, at least attempting to, as we're having a good time, by the way, in the bunker. Good time. The P89 came out 92 to 09. Sheesh. It was a rebranded P85 Mark II. Then you had the P90, a 45 ACP. That was an alloy framed. Uh, and then a bunch of other crap that I'm forgetting. Anyways, it's been around forever. Basically, the P series have been around since 87. Yeah. And the P95 is an amazing success story in the Ruger pistol lineup, is it not? Is it? Yeah, dude. It, you always know if a pistol is successful by how long it was produced. I just figured they had the tooling going and didn't want to quit. Well, true. That is a good point. But if they're not making money off of it, guess what? They're going to pitch it or they're going to yeah. discontinue it. And we have a lot of examples we've talked about on Tabletop here yeah. in TMP. A lot. The reason manufacturers come out with pistols is why? Make money. That's what they're trying to do. So if it's making money, they'll keep it in the lineup. If not, it's gone. So amazing durability of the P95. And that's where we're going to focus. We're not really going to the P85, P89, which by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. They were ugly. The this P is ugly. The P89 was a little bit better looking. Oh, uh, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. I think the P95 for looks is a lot more streamlined. It has an investment cast slide on it, an investment cast parts. It's a lot cleaner design than the P85 or the P89 ever was, says me. I will, I'll grant you this. I'm coming at this from a different angle. You're evaluating- The angle it. of a millennial. Yeah. You're evaluating this in a vacuum. Show it to them, dude. Every time you, you're you saying nice I'm things not, about it. I'm but, not doing it in a vacuum. Dude, look at the, the contemporaries of the era. Just but hold on. Away. What these guys are going to say is these are price. in completely different price categories and they're right. So you cannot compare these. All, my only point in bringing the SIG out was for aesthetics. Oh, by the way, did I mention when I bought this, I was a poor college student. I just allocated money for it. I was like, ah, I don't care. I'll find money somewhere. And I never regretted that decision. Yeah, ever. your wife still talks about the fight she had when you bought it. I that. lied. It was actually the 226 and the Glock 19. <laughs> I, t I lied about it. And I actually had a little parcel of money as a poor college student. So she goes, where'd that money go? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I, these are these pistols are staying in my house for a while. My friend is, he's, I just got to watch them for him. Still have the guns, by the way. Totally do. And by the way, I still have the same wife. Back to the P95. Philosophy of use will be standard, y'all. Except like we kind of mentioned early on, and we're going to show you inset footage. We shot this gun a lot. Uh, thanks to Gunny's, the Great America Gun Store. My cheesy sign right there. So we checked this gun out from him. And then I got some boxes of ammo from Federal. That's about it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Gunnies. So we shot it a lot. And you're going to see uh, inset footage of it. Philosophy of use, though, is a, a beater gun because... Heck, if you can roll into a store and get a used P95, for that matter, you might make the case for a P85, P89. I, I really want this to be a, a kind of a push for you guys to consider the P95. It's about four ounces lighter than the alloy frame P-series pistols. That opens up some avenues for you because yeah. now you're you're not spending $400, $500, $600 on one pistol. If it, end up, if it ends up getting, you know, stolen and ending up in that evidence locker of his buddies, you know, it's not the end of the world. Report it. Not you the end of the world. It could go into a cabin, for instance. Like if I'm yeah. in a log cabin or something or I have a bug out location. There you go. Lots of places where you could put a really inexpensive pistol. Yeah, I have really talked about this on Tabletop too. before. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Do your, uh, your British impression again. Somewhere along I, the way. I have to find some more things to praise about this wonderful Let me tell you this. Uh, uh, should I say it now or later? 
Uh, I'll say it now. Doodle pretty much hates this gun. Hate it. Oh, I don't. I don't. He, yeah. he, what he was saying off camera, and I think it's interesting, is he looks at this gun, he sees it as a holdover to the Bill Ruger era. Go. I, I really, I don't agree with the way William Ruger treated the company. I don't think he was a friend of the industry as much as people would maybe want to believe. He, you know, he campaigned for like 10 round mags. Mm -hmm. He was, a, he was writing politicians going, hey man, we're on board with this. Let's restrict capacity. Roger I, that. And this was built under That's 10 years. That's been widely discussed and there's a thousand comments right but, there. But we just, don't need to dredge all that up again. It's just a remnant of old Ruger, whereas new Ruger, as soon as he was gone, then suddenly they're like, hey, let's make ARs. And then new, new Ruger said, hey, let's go out and see what everybody else is doing and we'll yeah. do the same thing. Hey, Sorry, that company's doing that. cool work. Hey, we'll, we'll do solution. a version of that. Uh, yeah, let's. It's they not do a have some original pistols. Their LCP2 is amazing. It's fantastic. Amazing. It is probably the best pocket 380 out there, the LCP2. We carry one. I carry one yeah. all the time. He carries one. But yeah, it is an important point is that it kind of represents the design philosophy of the 90s Ruger Corporation, the company, which is kind of stodgy, wasn't really cutting edge. They'd seen what Glock had done. They knew that polymer pistols were successful. They figured, hey, we'll go ahead and make a pistol out of Dow Chemicals isoplast polymer, fiber reinforced. And they did their work. And I will say they did a great job with it's frame. Really durable. Super, super durable. Yeah. But it wasn't at the time, I don't think, like cutting edge, even for the 90s. Yeah. Here's why I say that. Because this gun weighs 30 ounces. That's a lot for a polymer frame pistol. Even back in the 90s, you may make the case, well, you know, guns were heavier back then, and I do like some heavier guns. I've said it before. I've been totally honest about it. I get it. But even back then, you had a 26 and a half ounce Glock 17. I'm not going to make this into a big rant. I could. I'm not. But, yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't cutting edge back then. Yeah, it and just, it represents the company's design philosophy. Oh, go ahead. There's one other well, point I want to make well, about that's, that. Like, I may compare it to these unfairly because of the price, but the design philosophy, you can't say that just the idea of making it lighter is going to be that much more expensive when you're committing to building a poly gun. It, it's just unusual that I want to see what metrics they had when they designed it because it's almost like they had a weight thing and then just a, eh, like a shrug sign smiley face next well, to it. Well, the P95... The P90 for that, no, the P90 is alloy frame, sorry. But the P95 was a price point pistol. So Ruger's been very good about taking a design and saying, how can we cut costs in this without cutting durability, without cutting shootability? And they did do a fantastic mm. job on the P95. Like we said, the frame, and like every P95 owner will tell you, frame is extremely durable. The investment casting has obviously stood the test of time. Uh, and they just got, they just made it more easily produced. And then they brought the price way down. I think back in the day, <coughs> you could buy this for like 315 bucks. That like is. brand new. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, remember my uh, my Daewoo DP51 review? Yeah. So I bought that at a gun show new via 4473. There is no gun show loophole, by the way. <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. I bought that for like 240 or 225 Dude. at the gun show in Spokane, Washington. Sheesh. So that's another price point pistol of the era I probably should have brought on tabletop. I forgot. Yes, we still own our DP-51. It's amazing. So they did a great job. To your point, though, it's a price point pistol. It's not that. This is not a price point pistol. This yeah. At the time, it was like, uh, it's, not, it's not insane like the P-210, but it, it's super high quality. But there the, were no punches pulled in yeah. its quality. All that machining takes. And that makes more. I warm up to it a little bit knowing that. If you were to tell me, hey, when we did this, we wanted as little machine work as possible. That's what they wanted. We wanted it floor to door in the lowest time. That way we could just pump it out there and sell it to security Get it in the hands agencies. of good civilians, which somehow trickled out of the hands of good civilians the into the hands of bad Bolivian guys. Bolivian National Police, maybe? Uh, <laughs> If you look it up, though, Ruger did have some unusual sales back in the day. You see that, like, I think the Bermuda Police Force used the, the Mini-14 in full auto or something. Probably. AC-556. Cool gun. Cool gun. Uh, one of the points I was going to make about Ruger's de design philosophy at the time, I mean, against our modern standards, I don't think it's fair to really compare it, is that they really didn't take an effort to make it very streamlined and thin. And that was also a criticism I had on the other P-Series, 85, 89. I think they're pretty fat. At the controls, you're looking at 1.4 inches. You kind of have a big slide release here. It's just a big, bulky gun, kind of. 
Uh, there's some other fat guns that I like. I don't think the SIG series is that thin, but it looks it looks kind of like some of the girls you've dated. They It looks fatter than they really are. Did you like that reference? Just one. Them? Did you like that reference? That was a good reference. Philosophy of use, uh, defensive pistol, home defense. Yes, it's got a slot right here. Collectible, absolutely not. These will never go up in value, not never. Uh, too heavy for a backpacking pistol. Truck gun, yeah, because that could be a high theft environment where people are going to take it, steal it from you. The truck gun, and that's about it. How about a college pistol for your daughter? Although you couldn't do it in the dorm room if, you, if she's sharing, I don't know, sharing yeah. uh, living quarters with someone else. I'm saying if she had her own place. One of my buddies we this had This would on be the a good one to send it with. Although this is a big gun for women. It's big in the grip. It's it's just too big and too heavy, I would think. Go for it. I forgot what our, his name was when we used him, but one of my buddies that came and shot with us used to have his Mosin in the dorms at college, and he actually hid it underneath the planners Tell them. On their floor, they had like a bunch of He's always huge, looking at me. I'm always trying plants. to have a look at you. Right there. Yeah, so he, he had to build like a little mini Terminator storage locker under there. That's pretty cool, up. actually. It was really cool. That guy's cool. Yeah. Was I cool. like that. Uh, the mod, a good way to show how Ruger as a company has changed, at least in their design language, look at the Security 9, which is basically an enlarged LCP2. It's much thinner. It's more angular than this gun. It's definitely lighter. I did review it. I do recommend the Security 9. It's a great pistol. That and the, yeah, the SR9, both amazing features. We're going to have to go... Well, we'll go the speed. We Lovely, want to go. wonderful that? features. I like the rounded, again, investment cast slide. It is more streamlined. We discussed that already. Two pin front slide. I didn't go looking, but I'm sure there's some type of higher front sights there if you need to change the elevation of where it's impacting. Uh, the overall sights, I would say, on your P95 are adequate. They're not bad. We've got a two dot variety in the back here. And that is windage adjustable just by drifting. One thing that I don't like is how short the sight radius is. Look, so they, why didn't you mill this in the back right here? Again, this is ancient history, so we can't go back in history and complain too much. But it, it's, it works fine. You'll see from the target, it shoots just fine. Uh, kind of a strange way, as sometimes Ruger does in there. They just do it. All companies do. Caltech does it. Strange way of attaching the front sight. You do have a one slot rail here. It's not really a pick rail here. And then pro tip from the Nut and Fancy project to you, I probably would not spray your Dow Chemical Isoplast Polymer frame with brake cleaner. It will it won't melt it, but it will stain it. You might see a stain here or there. Because I just cleaned this last night because it's going back. Trigger is adequate. I don't know if the trigger is amazing, but remember the price point. It's basically a $300 pistol in a day. Now it's probably $175 or $200. So for that price, I think the trigger is awesome. So the pull single action I measured last night was six pounds single action. It's going to be about 14 pounds double action only. And the reset is actually surprisingly not too bad. The thing that you have here is that this is a later production P95. As evidenced by the slot right here, there's an attempt at checkering right here, which we'll get to right now. Early P95s actually had a somewhat squared trigger guard, kind of like the 2245 did which I liked, kind of a hook. I like that this has a rounded, which I don't like. How about you? We don't like it. We like it uh, that they've come back. And actually I've been saying in tabletops in my reviews that the, the squared off, maybe hooked front trigger guard is coming back. We'll show that here in a little bit. And remind me to mention that. We got a pistol off camera, we'll show you. Uh, plenty roomy, maybe a little bit more roomy than a Glock, which I have back here. We're not gonna take it out because it is uh, holding the uh, AR-7 up. Did yeah. you see the AR-7? It's right there, bro. Yeah, it's a secret agent AR-7, one six scale in a briefcase. Boom. Boom. Move the gun out of the way so you can see that. Boom. Uh, the trigger, one thing is it does stack a little bit and it's a long pull double action. Um, I wonder if I should cover this here. I'll cover it here. I'm kind of going to jump ahead of how did it shoot. It's kind of related to the trigger. One thing that I don't like about the P95, and I noticed this all the way through in shooting it, it has a real kerchunk dynamic. It's like you feel that slide coming back. I just call it a kerchunk. It's like kerchunk, kerchunk, kerchunk in relation to the trigger and how it shot. I got used to it. It wasn't like a horrible thing, but it, it compared to other pistols, it didn't feel smooth. It just felt like it was very mechanical, very stagey how it did. 
go. As far as the single action go, you can achieve good accuracy with it. The grip, I mentioned a little bit already. Uh, so that was a change in later P95s. And then they also attempted, after many customer complaints, to put some type of traction on the P95. Was it successful? Tactical Absolutely doodle? not. It is crazy to me how it looks like it should have great traction, and then you grab it, and it's still slippery. Yeah, it's not not good at all. That's why you'll see pretty much all P95s rocking a handall yeah. rubber sleeve. It's it's pretty common because the, the grip is so horrible as far as traction goes. And then you've taken a relatively fat grip holding the 15 round magazine. Uh, there's an inside look at it. And now you put a handle on now that's a really chunky grip just so you can get traction. There are other ways you could cure that. I mean, you could probably go with the A-grip material, that synthetic suede. Yeah. But they probably have some all types of, uh, you know, uh, decal grip makes those on the side, either rubber or sand. Easily remedied now with what we have for accessories in our pistols. The angle of the P95 is fantastic. I find it comfortable. I don't need interchangeable back straps. I think it pretty much is a marketing ploy. I've always said that. I didn't get any hammer bite with it. Overall, pretty darn comfortable. You do have some undercutting on the molding of the, did I tell you already? The Dow Chemical Isoplast Polymer Frame. I don't know why I like saying that. It's I'm surprised. I can't believe they didn't make a special name for it. Yeah. Superla Flast. We have a ring hammer, hammer right here. Uh, comfortable, no problems with that. And then we have our slide mounted decock. Yeah, buddy. You cannot carry this condition one. It's gonna be either cocked like that or you're gonna drop it. Most guys that are carrying it are gonna carry it just like this. So it's gonna be a live round in the chamber. It has a firing pin block, of course, completely safe to do so. And then you're ready with a long double action trigger pull, which will transition to a single action. That's what you get on your Ruger P95. Have no problems with any of that. It's fine. Uh, I will say this though, I have a problem with how this side is designed. I think it's goofy. I just think this whole lever here, I don't like it. I'm gonna show you another pistol. Heck, let's show it now. Grab the Beretta. So here comes a Beretta M92, and I absolutely love this gun. I served with it in the military. Load that slide if you would, and then show demo it to him for him. So this is the same thing. We have the same dynamic. We have a slide mounted control, but it's much more trim. See this? So it's not a big fat lever, but it operates exactly the same way. I told you in the, M the official M92 review that I just, I just like it. It seems it's obviously it's smoother a little bit. Yeah, and people uh, complain P95. about that one all the time. When That's you talk a slide mounted one. Oh, all the time. They don't like it. They hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna hate that on the Beretta, you're really gonna hate it on the P95 because this is a big goofy lever and it digs into your thumb nicely. It is a great ambidextrous pistol, however, because you have this repeated on the side, and there's some of that 1.4 inch inches of width or 35 millimeters more or less. The magazine release, I do not like on the P95. Sorry, I don't. It's it is bad. fully ambidextrous. It's a forward push on the ambi uh, control right here. And you know what's great? Like I said, a lefties, you should, if you're looking for a value pistol, you should put the P95 on your list. I think it's a great choice as a value pistol. I'm talking about my proclivities and what I like. I don't like the mag release. I find myself hunting around for it a little bit. A little bit. Should we feel strip it or no? I'm thinking no. I don't really want to. Field strip is pretty easy. Maybe I'll roll in a picture, maybe I won't. All you're basically gonna do, you're gonna safety check it, of course. Then you have takedown marks right here. You can see them lined up on the slide. You're gonna retract that to the point of the takedown marks. I can't really see in the camera here. And then you're gonna extract the takedown lever, slide stop, pin, pull that out, and then off you go. What you'll find out when you get inside the P95 is going to be riding completely on the Dow Chemical Isoplast polymer rails. There is no metal, which at the time was somewhat controversial. They came out, people were like, that's insane. There's no way that's going to last. And like we said at the outset, if there's one thing Ruger knows how to do, they know how to, sorry, megaphone. Rip off other companies. Rip off other companies, sorry. Sometimes, not always, sometimes. They know how to make a durable gun. Their guns are extremely durable. They last the test of time. I don't really know of any Ruger gun that hasn't. Really? I'm just trying to think of an original design that they came up with. LCP2? 
Well, some people well, say you, that's a knockoff yeah, on a P3AT a, yeah, from yeah, Caltech. P3AT did but it the first. Gen 2 is not. That's its own animal. The way the grip is shaped, the improvement, that's way well, better gun than the P3AT. That's P3 what makes them good. They take the recipe and then they mm. do a good iteration of it. That's the SR22 pistols, kind of like yeah. the Walther P22. Yep. They're Taxol knockoffs, mm. the SR556, the American a piston. Pers- the RPR, the Ruger Precision Rifle. Yeah. There's That's been out in a lot of different forms from a lot of different companies. But it's all good for us. It's yeah. real. It's really good for us. I, we options. kid Ruger around for that, but I don't mind it. So don't yeah. take. Don't think we're like railing on Ruger. We're not. We buy their guns and we love their products. Whew. There you go. So the takedown. You'll see. Uh, yeah, polymer rails here, and they last. There's no complaints at all. We're talking guns that have seen twenty thousand rounds. They're still rolling, even though there's no metal. Uh, when I lube it, I'll clean it off, and then I'll just put like I think I. Put, put just like a little little tiny bit of white grease on the rails. What? Yeah, it works great. Works great. I recommend it. We've been doing it, and it's awesome. Uh, stainless steel barrel, high quality, everything inside, really. The one funky thing that when you take this gun down, which is weird, is you, you have this little lever right here. So you're going to have to, it's not really protruding now, but when you take it down, you got to make sure this lever's pushed down to extract a slide off. There it is right there. So I'm pushing it, and of course, I'm not doing a good job showing it to you. Sorry. There's your field strip. Whatever. And that's most of the features. My feel, I told, talked about the grip, how I liked it. The feel when I'm holding the P95 is that it feels blocky. How about you? It's chunky. It just feels blocky. Not really heavy, but it's a blocky gun. The slide is fat. Uh, it's just a blocky gun. I feel like I'm shooting a SIG. P, what was that one? The 2020, the one that yeah, Inadvertent Smell the 2022. Had. Yeah, the SP 2022. That one was a real blocky gun too, at least in appearance. It reminds me of that gun. Uh, and that takes us to how it shot. Well, we're kind of saying that already. Reliability. Do we have a stoppage? I don't remember I, I, a stoppage. I'll look in Post Pro. It's super reliable. It's a really reliable gun. And for that matter, oh freak, do I not have to target? I gotta go get the paper out of here. It is little more than the rich man's high point. <laughs> it is a one night stand gun, the kind of pistol you purchase when you are out of your element, <laughs> when you are shipped I out like via airplane and disarmed, yet you will be Ooh. working for weeks on end. <laughs> what shall you do? The you need, P95. You need a disposable gun. This is so. a serial number, by the way, we're reviewing. It'll be at Gunny's. So go ask them for the TMP gun. If you buy this one, I'll give you a TMP certificate with it. There you go. There's uh, one paper. We have some more, and I may roll it in photo. Maybe I won't. Either way, you'll see video. I would say it's pretty accurate. This is just seven yards. I will say this, though. I think, at least when I'm shooting it, these are TD's rounds right here. When I'm shooting it, actually, these are all yours, aren't they? I think so. You can tell because they're not great. They're not bad. They're not horrible. Uh, I find I have to concentrate a little bit when I shoot the P95 to get maximum accuracy out of it. Um, I've got to find a picture and I'll, I'll just show it to you that way. Uh, I thought it shot point of aim for me, but I have to concentrate on my trigger. And then once I found out the kind of way it shot, uh, I could do pretty good with it. Like at seven, seven yards, I could probably get it in three quarters of an inch. At 25 yards, I was just shooting some steel, no problem. No problem. So what we're saying is the gun is reliable and it's accurate. Despite all the little quibbles we have, it's actually a pretty solid handgun. If you can get past that, you're going to be spending basically 200 bucks, maybe less on a used P95, obviously. Um, that gets to the fact, would we buy it? My answer is absolutely. For those philosophies of use that I mentioned, TD, would you? I stand by as a one-night stand type of gun, like a disposable one. <laughs> disposable. Like, like, let's say I'm shipped out for work, and I'm a couple states away. I have my carry license. I can carry there. Okay, that's I'm disarmed situation. because I had to go on a plane. Mm-hmm. They tell you, oh, by the way, this uh, it's actually going to stretch me. out three months. You got to be there three. And I go, well, they're putting us up in a crap hotel. I want to be armed. You're working up in Alaska. Yeah, I, you know, I want a pistol, yeah. but at the same time, I don't want to go through the hassle of having to like bring it on. You know, so I'll probably sell it at the end so you just want to be cost effective but still you could actually so you can that's trust. that's an interesting pou because that's like an in place pou meaning you don't even travel with it you buy it when you're there you'll go to a pawn shop hey i saw t- nothing fancy in td's review on the p95 i want to buy one y'all nice work to shoot that's well. interesting actually i would buy it but here comes the rub 
it was not my first choice of value pistol. In fact, I wouldn't even probably put it in my top 10. All right, maybe top five. And it really depends on what price levels. If you say $200 or below, then yeah, it's there. But again, we'll go with a Canic. This is hot. It's coming out of a system. This is the, look, it's, this is a Canic 55 slide the mark on that. first one. Freaking awesome gun. Yeah, it's got the slide decocker. I've never had a problem with it, like I've always said. This is such a great gun. I mean, if you saw a used Canic TP9 55 in a case versus this, there's no way I would buy a P95. I mean, this is a modern pistol. It's basically a licensed copy of a Walther P99. Look at the sight radius, it's longer. And this is actually gonna be, oh, it's lo floated so I can't show you away empty. It's gonna be a little bit lighter, I think, than the P95. I think this is like a 27 and a half ounce pistol, the TP9. Uh, the one I think I would highly recommend you get, or at least put on your list, especially if you can find it used, and I've said it over and over again, I'm just gonna to continue to promote this pistol, safety checking it. Style. And that is a Steyr M9A1. Steyr. You like this pistol, don't you? I like it. It's got some sci-fi looking sights on it. I called it the Robocop pistol. Yeah, the TAC-9, I think you this called it. This is a great gun. So this is gonna be lighter than a P95. Very, very reliable. Very, very accurate. Much better trigger. Look at that low slide that sits in your hand. So it's gonna have less muzzle flip, if uh -huh. you care. Again, this is a 90s design. I mean, look yeah. how high that, that slide is. That's a lot of metal above the web of your hand. I didn't find it, and I rarely find it be a problem in a 9mm loading. I don't really care about muzzle flip with a 9. If you go to like a 357 SIG, 45 ACP, then I'll discuss it more. Well, and the weight tames it so much in that little 95. That's true. I, it, I, it really does. Look at this. This reminds me, this portion of the M9A1 reminds me of a P7. H and K P7. Doesn't that look like a P7 right there? Yeah. Which, by the way, he is so wanting. He wants a P7 M13. He's been hunting, hunting, hunting. We don't have one in inventory. We used to see him as surplus all the time. We thought, those are kind of cool. Never bought them. Check out the accuracy of the M9A1. So my point in rolling this in is if you find a use one of these in any flavor, subcompact, normal, long slide, I would way get that more than a P95. Look at this accuracy, y'all. Wow, that is incredible. I think these are first shots, plus P, and then this is me standing with the M9A1, the Steyr. Look at that, right there. That's standing at 25 yards with well, this I'll gun. Tell you what. I tell you what, too. Well, I don't I'll think tell I, you what. I could not do that with a P95. I don't think I could. I didn't really try. Other value pistols that you can consider super quick. We talked about the SR9, the Security 9. Both are highly recommended. The High Point. High points are great if you can get past their looks and they weigh 14 pounds they a piece. Are chunky little mofos. Yeah, they're just super heavy. Uh, but well, they're a direct blowback though. Grand Power K12 and P1. The Grand Powers are oh, yeah. amazing. I've reviewed the P1 and it got a very positive review. I would buy one of those guns, no problem at all, as long as SAWC is not your primary consideration. The Ruger American pistol, here we go. It's another Ruger product. It's a committee pistol. I never liked it, never signed off on it. And sure enough, we're starting to see a bunch of them coming in to use gun counters, sure or false. Giant surprise. They filled up like what, a whole shelf yesterday? Yeah, we, we were in a gun store and we looked and there were four Ruger American 9 mms there that guys apparently had and apparently didn't like. Probably trading them in for Canix, just saying. Walther PPX, awesome gun. The Walther CCP is awesome. That's a single stack though, so it doesn't really compare. Uh, Smith & Wesson SD9, the double action only. The Sigma, uh, I don't think a lot of people think fondly of that. The Diamondback FS9. I actually kind of like that. I love that gun. That, was, that would be yeah. a good pick. It, it's a cool looking gun, lightweight, uh, and it's going to be about, well, it's going to be more expensive than this because you're probably going to buy it new. We did out a couple stoppages with FS9 though, and after that it ran good. There you go. So bottom line on the quintessential meth dealer's choice. I mean, I was going to say Bill Ruger's masterpiece well, with your British imitation. Bill Ruger's masterwork. Would we buy P95? Yes. With the Absolutely. stipulations provided here in the bunker, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's a great gun for the price. It's super, super durable. I don't think it's super thin. I don't think it's easy to carry. I think it's bulky and heavy, especially for a polymer gun. But you're only paying $175, $225, whatever you get it for, for a pistol. Absolutely get one. It's pretty yeah. sick. 
standing the test of time. And we're done. See you later. How much are the mags for it? Mm, I forgot to show the mags actually too. Hmm. Just the video. There's your mag. I'd be curious. It would be uh, funny if they're like 60 bucks a piece or some obscene. I'm sure they're cheap. Let me find out. It doesn't matter. They're going to be relatively inexpensive. I don't think S or P series mags are that expensive. 15 round mags, and they probably make some 20s for it too. So decent firepower for the time period. Now we're really done. 13 bucks? No way. Really? See ya.